So let's talk about eventual consistency. Uh, there's a few things there uh, that are kind of really challenging when you first get started with the idea of eventual consistency. Um, it takes a lot of people, um, a lot of thought in this space to really make it work. Um, there's a lot of benefits to it. Um, typically when you're talking about eventual consistency, you're talking about systems that are loosely coupled. Um, and loosely coupled systems are typically much better at keeping uptime. Um, and also can make it more easily to scale the right areas of your application. Um, but I'll just give you kind of a couple run-throughs, um, kind of like what tightly coupled is and just like really simple architecture and just kind of the methodology that existed behind it. Um, so I'm just going to go back to my always uh, consistent web application um, talking to um, a database. So you know, historically you've had like your, your server, your VM, whatever this is, talking to a database. The idea being that, you know, when a call is made, so let's say we're doing like a save, um, so we're going to save a piece of data, um, that actually goes to the, to the web server. The HTTP traffic is then, you know, put to the, let's say, SQL server, um, and a, a transaction is run. So the actual, like, um, consistency of the data um, throughout this whole thing because there's a transaction in place means that um, this is really pretty much guaranteed at this point that this was like written to disk. So this is very tightly coupled and so there's a lot of problems at scale with this because um, you know if you have a lot of saves happening at the same time uh, maybe your database can't keep up and you actually start erroring these out um, which, which might not be a good behavior for your clients. Um, so this is really, you know, tightly coupled. Um, the web server will not be successful unless the database is successful. So that's kind of the tight coupling there, the way that I would look at it. Now, just going into a really quick, simple, loose coupling. Um, I've talked about this before in kind of queuing basics, uh, but the idea here is that um, you take whatever was being saved, um, you put it on a queue, and then later you'll stick it in the database. Um, so from the client's perspective, um, it kind of changes greatly. So the save hits the web server, the web server puts it on a queue, and then that the coupling is over, right? So there's no fully, fully understanding of if that item hit the disk or not. But, you know, as a system developer, you should be able to say, you know, we kind of guarantee this and we guarantee this, right? So these are two kind of separate guarantees that we make. Um, so this is kind of now becoming loose coupled where you're saying that, you know, if it makes it to the queue, um, I trust that we're going to put it in the database, right? So basically you're going to say to your client that it was saved, although the save is actually the eventual, right? So it's not yet happened. And the latency can be really small. We could be talking milliseconds of latency, we can be talking seconds, minutes, hours whatever you choose uh, on the latency. <clears throat> so again, to me, this is a very simple way to start doing loose coupling and also starts kind of showing you how eventual consistency can kind of run into your system. So now I'll do like a kind of a bigger one and I'll just try and talk through it. Um, so we're going to do like, let's pretend we're Facebook and we're going to do like likes. So the idea that there's a piece of content on a web page and you want someone to hit like. So, um, doo -doo -doo. so you'll have your, your, your like being like posted to the server. Um, that server will be running. Um, in one case, um, I was actually sticking it in uh, like a NoSQL table. You know, let's, just, let's just write NoSQL. And so if you had a piece of content um, and it was liked five times within like a certain time frame, we would just keep appending it to the NoSQL like table column data. And so all of that would just keep getting appended. Um, and then there was a serious break in terms of um, this wouldn't trigger any action on the system. This would just be like a running process, let's just say like every one minute, it would look for new batches. So 
So this is just a re repeating process that has really nothing to do with if anybody hit like. Now this, you know, there could be more thought put around that and have a little bit more of a push. I just want to be really basic here as to what's going on. And so every minute then, the database is getting the count. So in this case, it's going to pull the four, it's going to do the math, and it's going to store four likes to this piece of content into the database. So given a process like this, here I just want to make sure that these aren't kind of intruding on one another. So giving a process like like, where it hits your web server, you stick it in like a NoSQL approach, um, and then a background process is just slowly gathering that data and pushing it into like a database. Um, you can see here that this is really like truthfully eventual consistency. The idea being here that this almost has no impact as to when that will hit the database. This is really the governing factor as to when this will hit the database. So you have really good control over when you want to process it, how much you want to process, all of that kind of stuff, right? And again, it's true in the middle layer where you know, your DQ rate, you can choose that, right? So this is eventual consistency. And as a system architect, the idea to think about really is how long do you want this to take, right? And so the faster you want it to, to, to be, the, the worse it's, the, kind of the worse it's gonna scale, right? Or the harder it's gonna be to scale. If you can make these numbers in like the minute time frame, this is extremely easy to support and extremely easy to support at scale. Um, and this gives you a lot of options um, and breaks your system down into kind of more simple components that are doing simple things. Um, and I really, I really like that um, from usually a cost perspective, but definitely a performance and scalability perspective. Um, so really recommend start thinking about moving things into eventual consistency. They don't work for everything. Like on a user signup, definitely a portion of it, you want it to be kind of this transactional. Um, or if you're doing like monetary things, they typically will fall into this transactional model. But if you're doing things like analytics, telemetry, aggregation of data, it's much better to have this breakdown, slow that flow, but just guarantee that you're going to do it within, within a specific time frame. Just determine what that time frame should be for the piece of data. Anyways, I hope this was enjoyable. Uh, let me know if you have any comments. Hit me up on Jeff King ABC. All right, peace out. Bye.